All right, today I'm going to tie for you uh, kind of a fun little fly, and this one is called uh, Drunken Susie. Um, it is a yellow sally imitation, a, an adult yellow sally imitation, um, and it is named after my my lovely sister-in-law, Suzanne. Um, I'm not going to say that Suzanne is a drunk, uh, but uh, she does like a glass of wine or whiskey every now and again, and and uh, we we have a long history of giving each other crap, so um, I named this fly after her. And the idea was, is I had been uh, fishing a lot uh, during the summer months, and there was uh, a lot of you know pretty good yellow sally hatches, um, up you know through Colorado, Wyoming, and, and Idaho, and and all the conventional patterns just uh, you know were basically derivatives of a stimulator, and I wanted something that floated lower and was a little more imitative um, of of the actual bug. A yellow sally is a small yellow stone. Um, they can sometimes be olive. They can even kind of lean toward lime. Um, but it's a small, about a size 16 little stonefly. Um, and they sit pretty low on the water and they kind of run across the water. So, so I wanted something that was much lower floating um, than, than what was conventionally available. So I came up with this fly. So um, what we're going to start with here is a Tiemco 100 SPBL size 16. And I've got some 30 denier nano silk in yellow. And I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to start it just up here behind the eye. I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the bend. Once I get there, I'll come back forward about two-thirds of the way. And at this point, I'm going to take some Glowbrite floss. Um, and this is number four Glowbrite floss, which I think is called flame colored, but I'm not positive of that. Um, but I do know for sure that it's called number four. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to cut off oh, about four inches of this. And I'm going to double that strand over, so I've got two strands, like so. And I'm going to tie this in at the center of its length, up here at that two-thirds point. And then I'll fold the front ends back, and I'm going to wrap back over all four strands, all the way to the bend. And you want to make sure you're all the way back on the last straight portion of the hook there. So I've just got four strands of that, that Glowbrite floss hanging out the back end. And now for the body, the abdomen of this fly, I'm going to use some Opal Mirage tinsel in size medium. And people have asked me, you know, why did you why did you decide to go with the, the tinsel rather than dubbing? Um, and I think as you know, we as, as people, as, as anglers, um, look at tinsel and see that it's flashy and bright. Um, I think what tinsel does for us in fishing situations is it mirrors. Um, so it picks up the color of things that are around it. Um, and this material is going to pick up the color of the wing. It's also going to pick up some of the ambient color or light in the area. Um, so it'll be darker on a dark day and, and brighter on a bright day. Um, but it, it sort of mirrors the color. So um, you know I use this a lot on a lot of, of my different flies. Um, and I, that's just one of my theories about why it works so well. Is it's not so much uh, flash as it is sort of a mirror and, and even makes the fly blend in even a little more. Um, so with my thread hanging at the bend here, and in an effort to keep the body thin, I'm going to lay this piece of tinsel in along the near side of the hook on edge, and you can see the tag end is just up where the tail started. And I'll catch it back here at the bend, and then I'm going to make a nice smooth thread base coming forward over it. Uh, this tinsel will also pick up some of the color of the thread underneath it. So now I'm going to start to wrap this tinsel, and I want to overlap about a half a turn on each turn as I wrap forward so that I don't have any gaps or spaces. And then I'll tie that off with a couple of turns of thread at the front and trim that tag end out. Now you can see I've left a little stub there. I'm going to wrap over that stub all the way up to the hook eye and back to the front edge of the body and even overlap onto the front edge of it just slightly. Now at this point I'll come in and I'm going to trim the, the tail off and I want it just to the bend of the hook. Um, so it's just a short little stub. Uh, the idea of that orange stub is the, the butt end of a yellow sally very often has got sort of an orange streak or orange, orange color to it. Uh, so that's what that little hot spot is meant to do right there. So now for the wing. Um, I've played with a lot of different materials and, and a lot of different variations, and I've been, been really hot on this uh, uh, polypro polypropylene macrame yarn. And so what I'm going to do is take a very thin strand of yellow, and what I've done there is just folded that in half, and I want to sort of fold it tightly, and then I'll roll it in my fingertips to crease the tip, like so. So I've got sort of a little teardrop-shaped piece, and I want to lay this in flat on top, 
just beyond the end of that orange butt. So I'm going to lay it in on top, catch it with a few turns, and then form a band of thread so that that wing lays like so. You can see that's a nice silhouette from the bottom. Um, one of the advantages of this, this uh, macrame yarn, you don't want to use Antron or Zelon or Darlon. Those are uh, nylon fibers. They're not very buoyant. This macrame yarn is incredibly buoyant. Um, it uh, you put a little floating on this thing and it, it floats forever. So I've, I use this on a lot of flies now. So I'm going to come in and trim the butt ends of that out. And I'll wrap down over what was left and then right back to the front edge of the body. Um, one of the other cool things about this wing is you can sort of keep it all together like so for a bud that's at rest. And if you say you have a fish eat your fly and you miss him, um, very often they won't eat that same fly again. So you need to change up the pattern a little bit. You can take this wing and sort of spread it out and make it into two wings like so. Um, and just change the overall profile of the fly. Um, you can also put it back together just by rolling them in your fingertips and getting them back where we started. Um, so pretty versatile, um, cool material. So that's just plain yellow there. Um, and now for the head of the fly, I'm going to go a little little off the grid here, and I'm going to build a dubbing loop. We're going to make a compound dubbing loop uh, to create the head and uh, overwing on this fly. So I'm going to make oh, just a couple inches of, of thread. I've got maybe four inches total, which I've doubled over, four or five inches. And I'm going to form a dubbing loop there using my, my dubbing whorl. And I'll put one leg of the, the dubbing loop in my material spring, and that'll keep that uh, hanging back here out of the way while I prepare my materials. Um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to take some Nature Spirit Emergence Dubbing in yellow, and I'm going to take just a, a little pinch of this. You really don't need very much. Um, this is just sort of to act as a vehicle to make it easier to get the, the materials in the loop, but it does add a little shine and sparkle to the wing. So I'm going to take that clump of dubbing and set it down on my tabletop. And then I'm going to take, I've got two CDC feathers here that are stacked on top of each other. Get these positioned in my fingers so you can see them. And what I want to do is grab a clump of those fibers and I'm going to trim them from the center stem so I've got just the loose fibers in my fingertips. And I'll take that clump of fibers and put it down on top of the dubbing as well. I had used those two feathers previously, so I'm going to grab one more here. Because I lost a few as I went to put them in there conveniently off screen. Um, I didn't even have to tell you that, but I figured you should know because it'll probably happen to you too. All right, so I've just stuck a few more fibers in there. And then the final piece of the head, I'm going to use uh, some coastal deer hair. This is bleached and dyed yellow. Now, uh, before you go searching throughout the universe for bleached and dyed coastal deer hair, I will tell you that I bleached, I didn't bleach this piece, I bought it bleached, um, but I did dye it myself. Um, they don't, this is not commercially available. I'm going to talk to Thomas and see if I can convince him to do it, but I know coastal deer hair is in pretty short supply these days, so we'll see what our luck is. That being said, I have tied this with plain bleached and, and even just plain natural, um, and w even with the, the grayer color of the natural hair, uh, with the yellow dubbing and yellow CDC that we've got mixed in there, it's yellow enough. Uh, but in the interest of being a perfectionist, which I absolutely am, I, I came home one night and just dyed up a piece of this, and um, it's worked really nicely for these. Um, so I'm going to take a clump of this coastal deer, and I'm not going to stack this. I'm going to cut this clump out, and I'm going to clean it uh, just like I normally would for any, any type of hair wing fly, or any hair application for that matter. I want to clean that hair out, but I don't want to stack it. Coastal, coastal deer is, is fairly even to begin with. If you've got a real ragged piece, I suppose you could stack it up. Um, but in this case, I don't, I don't need to do that. And I'm going to lay that right on top of my dubbing clump with the CDC. So right now I've got sandwiched um, dubbing, CDC fibers, and deer hair. Uh, and I'll pick this up here in a second and show you. Uh, so what, I'll, what I'm going to do, the tool that I use to do this is, is called a, uh, a dubbing loop tweezer. Um, and it's a reverse pair of tweezers. This one is from Umpqua, dubbing tweezers. Um, and so it's a reverse pair of tweezers, so when you squeeze it, it opens. Um, and it's got a nice fine tip like so. 
And I'm going to take this and slide this under the dubbing and over the deer hair. And I want to sort of align the edge with the length that I need so that I can pick that up off the table like so. Um, what I'm concerned with is the length of this hair here on this side. Um, I want that to be about to the bend of the hook. About, you know, just roughly. Um, this side, I'm going to be able to trim off. So what I'll do here, try to get this where you can you can watch, is I'm going to come in and just trim that off. And I want to leave some little stubs sticking out below the tweezers. Like so. So now I'm going to take my dubbing loop. And I'll take my deer hair and dubbing mix and put it between the two strands of the dubbing loop and then open the tweezers. I'm now going to pinch the two strands of the dubbing loop together and I'll spin my dubbing roll. And what I'm going to end up with is a really sort of ragged, coarse uh, deer hair dubbing CDC chenille. Like so. You can see how shaggy that is. Um, and, and you've got all those different textures and fibers kind of sticking out at all angles. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to start to wrap it. And I'm going to go right from the base of the wing. And on each turn, I sort of treat this like a, like a soft tackle collar. I want to fold these fibers back as I go. Right up to the hook eye. Use the last bit of that material and you can see how it might take you a couple to gauge what is exactly the right amount to put in there. And then I'll tie this off just behind the eye with a couple nice firm wraps of thread. And I usually fold that in back and get a couple more turns over it. Then I'll trim that loop out. Now I wet my fingers just a bit and sweep everything back. I'm going to build a nice clean tight thread head over that tie off to clear the hook eye and then I'll whip finish my thread. Trim my thread out. And as we sit right now, we've got a fairly bushy fly. Um, you know, I've always thought, you know, that would be a good one for, for heavy riffles, um, but I tend to always trim these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in across the bottom and pull all the fibers down and trim this about as flat as I can get it. I'll usually go from a couple angles here to make sure I've cleared the, the bottom of the hook off. And you can see we've got basically a little spun deer hair head there um, that didn't take much work. And then I can come in from the top and trim just in an angle. I kind of try to keep it a little wide. You know, Sally's are a pretty slender little bug though, so don't get too carried away. And you can see by measuring the length of the deer hair that you've got sticking out of the dubbing loop to start with, um, that'll minimize the amount of trimming that you need to do. And so now we've got that sort of mixed wing of, of deer hair, CDC, and dubbing. And you can see the sparkle from the dubbing that, that mixes in there. There's a good angle of that. You can see a nice little chunk of that here on this far side against that black. Um, and that is our, our little Drunken Susie Yellow Sally pattern. This has been um, a pretty fun fly. Um, it, it's buoyant enough to still skate, uh, but you can also stop it, and it's you know, imitative enough to actually pass for the real thing. Um, that's one of the, the problems with the, uh, the bushier bugs, is they, uh, um, as soon as they stop moving, they uh, obviously or become pretty obviously fake. Um, and that's one of the things I like about this fly, is it, uh, it does not do that. Now, that being said, Yellow Sally's... Um, you can uh, actually fish this fly underwater as well. Um, I'll very often at the end of the drift, if it if it sinks, I'll just let it stay there. I think they get washed under and fish do recognize what they are. Um, so not just limited to being a dry fly, um, although that's the, the most fun way to fish this thing. Um, you can, can let it sink. I've not tried fishing it with a split shot and sunk way down yet, but um, I'm sure that day will come. Um, and I think this fly would do, do pretty well at that. Um, you can see I like a little a little bit more tapered to that head. Uh, about like so. Yeah, there we go. And that is our, our drunken Susie um, for my my good friend Suzanne. I hope she likes that. Uh, we've had a couple pretty good laughs over it, and she finally, she wanted a fly. Her sister got a fly, and um, she finally, finally got the, the one named after her, so I hope she likes it. Uh, thanks for watching. That's the drunken Susie. I'm Charlie Craven.